This is statistics part two, standard deviation and z-scores. So the standard deviation is a statistic that tells how tightly all the results are clustered around the mean in a set of data, or in other words, the average amount by which the data differs from the mean of all the data in the process. So for example, if you look at all these distributions down below, they all have a mean of 5. But the mean only tells us where the middle is, or the average. So what standard deviation is going to do is going to give us more information about how spread out the data is. So even though they all have a mean of 5, they would have a different standard deviation because, as you can see, they're all spread out differently. To calculate standard deviation, we actually first have to calculate variance. So the variance is denoted by sigma squared, that little symbol means sigma and then sigma squared. So how we calculate the variance is to take each data point in the set and subtract the mean from it and then square that answer add it all up and divide by the number of elements. Remember when I say elements I just mean numbers in the set of data. So then the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So everything we do to, to find variance and then just take the square root. So the reason we do that is because if you have a mean that's greater than one of the values in the set you're going to end up with a negative number. For example, if the mean was 6 and your element was 2, well, that's going to give you a negative 4. So that's going to mess it up when we're trying to find the average distance from the mean. So to account for that, that's why we square it first, to make them all positive, get the average, and then essentially to find the standard deviation, the actual average distance, we then undo that squaring that we did up here by taking a square root. Okay, so we can do that by hand, which isn't that hard, but our calculator will also do that for us. So this is on the TI-83 or TI-84. To do that, the first thing you're going to do is just enter your data into your list 1. So remember, stat, edit, enter to get to list 1. Then once it's in there, you're going to go back to stat, arrow over to calc and then hit enter because um, that's you're gonna select one variable statistics so it says one var stats that's one variable statistics and that's what you want to find your sigma because if you look down here sigma x is listed all the way down there and then also notice in this screen you can see X bar. Remember X bar stands for mean. So actually it gives you the mean too. Okay, so we'll find it once by hand just so you can see where it comes from. So I'm going to write these are my values, the actual elements in the set. This is just the number of elements in the set over here. So I'm going to write them in 4, 5, 4, 2, 4, 7, 6, 8, and 5. The next column is the distance from the mean, so I'm going to subtract the mean from each one of those numbers. In this case, our mean is 5. So 5 minus, sorry, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. 5 minus 5 is 0. 4 minus 5 again is negative 1. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, negative 1, 7 minus 5 is 2, 1, 3, and 0. And again, to account for those negative numbers, I'm going to square all of those. So 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, 9, 1, 2, 1, oh, sorry, 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, and 0 squared is 0. So then if we add all of that up, we get 26. 26 divided by the number of elements, well, there's 9. So 26 divided by 9 is 2.89 rounded. 
And then to find the actual standard deviation, we're going to take the square root of that, which is 1.699 or 1.7 rounded. So in other words, each one of these elements is on average 1.7 away from the mean or away from 5. And again, we can find that on our calculator and it will do all of that without having to do any of these calculations and we should get the same exact thing. The next part of this is z-scores. So when a set of data values are normally distributed we can standardize each value by converting it into a z-score. And when I say normally distributed, I mean it, falls, it follows a normal distribution, or if you've ever heard of the bell curve. Um, so z-scores make it easier to compare data values measured on different scales, because again, they standardize each value. A z-score reflects how many standard deviations above or below the mean a raw score is. And a z-score is positive if the data is above the mean and negative if it's below the mean. To calculate a z-score we have our z-score formula which is z equals x minus mu over sigma where x represents an element in the data set mu represents the mean and standard deviation is represented by sigma so again the x is the individual point in the set of data that we're trying to find the z-score for mu is the mean of the data set and sigma is the standard deviation so for example to find the z-score we're going to use that formula from above so z equals x minus mu over sigma. Suppose SAT scores among college students are normally distributed with a mean of 500, a standard deviation of 100, and if a student scores a 700, what would be her z-score? So what you first need to understand is what each of these things means. So remember x stands for the individual data point, which in this case is just one student score. Mu stands for the mean, which is 500, and sigma is standard deviation, in this case 100. So if we're just trying to find a z-score, we're just plugging it into this formula. So her z-score would be equal to 700 minus the mean of 500 divided by 100, well, 700 minus 500 is 200, divided by 100, which gives us 2. So in other words, what that's telling us is that this student score of 700 is two standard deviations above the mean. So again, if you think about it, it makes sense. If the standard deviation is 100, she's 200 points above 500. She's two standard deviations above the mean. Okay, to give you another example, you can find a specific value if you're given a z-score. So in other words, we're going to work backwards if we know someone the z-score of a particular data point. So it says, what will be the miles per gallon for a Toyota Camry when the average miles per gallon is 23? It has a z-score of 1.5 and a standard deviation of 2. So again, looking at our formula, z equals x minus mu over sigma. Well, we've been given our z-score of 1.5. Average MPG is the mean, and sigma is 2 in this case. So again, we're just going to plug in what we know. And this time we know the z-score. We're trying to find x. So 1.5 has to be equal to x minus the mean, minus 23, divided by the standard deviation of 2. So here is where we're going to use our algebra skills. And we know that to solve for x, we need to get x by itself. So to do that, we're going to get rid of this 2 first because the whole thing is being divided by 2. So we can multiply by 2 on both sides. 2 times 1.5 will give me 3. 
and then x minus 23, and to get x by itself, we add 23 to both sides. So x is equal to 26. So in other words, if we know a car specifically has a z-score of 1.5, what that's telling us is that it's one and a half standard deviations above the mean. Well, if it has a standard deviation of 2, one standard deviation above 23 would be 25, and half of a standard deviation would be 1, so then another half above is 26. So that's just how we can work backwards given a z-score to find the original value. And that's it for this section.